Ah, uh, the BMW 5 Series. There's more than 50 years of history behind the 5, and it's one of the most popular options for those in want of a premium large sedan. 1972, its launch year, was a busy year for BMW, with concept cars and the launch of its motorsport division, now known as M. Perhaps appropriately, BMW also toyed with the idea of an electric car that year, with the 1602E concept, the same year the 5 Series launched. Now, a new generation 5 Series has also landed in Australia, and it's here with some new tricks up its sleeve. There it is. This one specifically is the E-Drive 40, which makes it the middle of the range, or the lower of the two electric variants. Below this, there's the petrol-powered 520, and above it, there's the all-wheel drive electric M60. The 5 Series is, of course, here to take on old rivals like the Mercedes E-Class and Audi A6, but the automotive world is changing. Audi, for example, now has the e-tron GT as a more expensive premium alternative for large sedan buyers. Interestingly, the BMW 5 Series also sits in the same market category as the electric Porsche Taycan. It's second for sales in the large premium category this year so far, but the Taycan is first. They might not be direct rivals in every way, but maybe the i5 can help take the 5 Series to the top. The G60 Generation 5 Series starts from $114,900 before on-road costs for the base 520i. That's the lone petrol variant in the range. Even though it's the base model, it comes with a fairly extensive list of standard features, fitting for its place as an executive sedan. Its interior comes as standard in Vaganza synthetic leather with M Alcantara trim, or optionally, a $4,000 merino leather interior. BMW has called this interior essentially a Baby 7 series, it even has that crystalline interaction bar across the dash. The 12.3 inch instrument display and 14.9 inch multimedia display are standard across the range, as are the heads up display, ambient lighting, panoramic glass roof, wireless phone charging tray, and heated sports seats. The 520 has a Harman Kardon sound system with 12 speakers. When you step up to go electric in the mid-tier i5 E-Drive 40, pricing starts at $155,900, and it comes with a pretty similar interior, aside from the merino leather being standard. The E-Drive 40 adds adaptive suspension, 20-inch aerodynamic wheels to replace the 19s, a 17-speaker Bowers & Wilkins sound system, metallic paint as standard, and the extras that come with it being an EV. That means charging cables, acoustic warnings to make car noises for pedestrian safety, and a 5-year Charge Fox subscription. It also, like the M60 Top variant, comes with BMW's iconic sounds feature, which creates interior sound based on drive modes and behaviour, as composed by Hans Zimmer. The i5 M60 xDrive, which ups the ante to 215,900, adds more power as well as more capable adaptive M suspension with active anti-roll, plus ventilated seats, four-zone auto air conditioning, a rear spoiler, and no-cost optional 21-inch wheels. It's important to note though that opting for the 21-inch wheels will reduce your driving range as they're heavier and less efficient. For full features and specs, head to carsguide.com.au for the written review. In terms of how it looks, if you thought that buying an electric BMW would mean buying something that looks different though, that's really not the point. BMW has actually said that all three variants look pretty similar to keep a consistent design across all the grades and not turn it into an i5 versus a 5 Series. BMW has kept the 5 Series looking pretty traditional, with the kidney grille upsizing by far less than it did on the 4 Series. It's incorporated classic BMW and 5 Series design elements like the character line down the side of the car, the bonnet line following the grille, and of course, the rear side window's Hofmeister kink. Some new elements include the addition of the number 5 imprinted on the C-pillar, and of course, a vast proportion of the interior. Here in the driver's seat, you can kind of see what BMW is talking about when it says this is a bit of a best of both worlds between the 3 Series with its nimbleness and sportiness, and the 7 Series with its larger, luxurious vibes. While the new BMW operating system 8.5 is a little more complicated to use, the multimedia control wheel and controls around the centre console will be familiar to BMW owners. Everything you'll actually need to touch in the cabin, like the places you'll rest your arms or touch for screens or anything, all feel pretty good, aside maybe from the slightly plasticky looking crystalline element along the dash. That crystal element is the BMW interaction bar, as seen in the new 7 Series. It houses some touch-sensitive operations like climate control. 
Centered below that is the dual charging pad, which is hidden out of the way nicely, and most of the placement for storage and controls is relatively ergonomically sound. In the second row, seating is suitably comfortable with the 5 Series relatively long 2995mm wheelbase going some way to affording a spacious ride in the rear. One other thing is that some of the controls here that are made from Swarovski crystal can get a little bit reflective when the sun's shining on them. Not ideal for, uh, you know, seeing. And regardless of which variant you find yourself in the driver's seat of, being flashed with crystals, there is something to like about each of their drivetrains. The base 520i has a modest 153 kilowatts and 330 newton meters from its 2 litre turbocharged 4 cylinder, with 48 volt mild hybrid assistance. Via an 8 speed automatic transmission, that power and torque goes to the rear wheels for a claimed 0 to 100 time of 7.5 seconds. A 250 kilowatt, 430 newton meter electric motor on the E Drive 40's rear axle cuts that 0 to 100 time to 6 seconds. But the dual motor M60 with its all wheel drive and hefty 442 kilowatts and 820 newton meters makes a brisk 3.8 second sprint to 100 k's an hour. This being the first i5 means that if you've driven or owned a 5 Series in the past, getting into this one feels a little bit different. For a start, in the two electric variants, they do feel a little bit heavier, and that's because they've got all of that weight from the 84 kilowatt batteries. But they do actually handle their weight pretty well as well. If you're trying to drive quickly, which a lot of people who own 5 Series might be inclined to do, the 5 Series in its electric form has a fairly impressive amount of acceleration given its weight and feels a lot more nimble on its wheels than it should, although once you start cornering quite hard you can hear the tyres working pretty quickly. In the higher spec M60, which is not the one I'm driving right now, it's got all-wheel drive as well, so it feels really quite quick on its feet through corners, especially given its weight, and even though it's not actually carrying that much speed into the corner, because of all its power, you can really kick it out of a corner quite quickly. Of course, day to day, the main thing that matters is whether they're comfortable, and right from the 520 up to the M60, the 5 Series is pretty much that. The 520, of course, doesn't have the same level of adaptive suspension and stabilization that the two higher models do, but even with a little bit of roughness on particular roads, especially here in Australia, it's a pretty comfortable car. It feels properly nimble, and you can carry a fair bit of speed through corners. Of course, the downside compared to the i5 siblings is that if you do need to slow down for a corner, accelerating back out of it takes a little bit longer. Basically, what I'm saying is that while the petrol-powered 520 has nimbleness and its lighter weight on its side, the power behind the electric motors in the rear-wheel drive 40 and the all-wheel drive M60 are both really impressive. Even the 40 being the mid-grade and, while well, it's not the cheapest car of all time, this one's actually really fun. It being rear-wheel drive also makes it probably a little bit more dynamically interesting for those who like a traditional sports car feeling. There is, of course, also the fact that when you really think about it, you're driving a large sedan around and any fun you can get out of a car like that is always worth having. There are a couple of things, though, that might be a little bit confusing if it's your first time in a BMW. For example, like many of its stablemates, the steering wheels in uh, pretty much all three variants are probably just a little bit too thick to be perfectly comfortable, and the buttons for the controls that are on the steering wheel sit just a little bit too close to where your thumbs should rest in the nooks of the steering wheel, especially if you are driving, as you should, with your hands at 9 to 3. The other thing is that sports steering is probably just a little bit too heavy and if you do have it in sports mode, it's probably just worth changing it to comfort, even if it is a little bit on the lighter side. When it comes to things like the seating position and ergonomics of the car, there are a few things that are probably a little bit frustrating in this car, especially if you're used to the way BMWs used to be laid out. Some of the buttons here in the middle, for example, are harder to see because of the piano black or even the Swarovski crystal controls. And you can't actually see all of the controls that are available to you. For example, I can't actually see the back button that's next to the scroll wheel here under the navigation button. There is, however, something kind of interesting about the i5s, and that is that, essentially, they have soundtracks composed by Hans Zimmer. And they're quite dramatic. One of them is called Relax, and 
the faster you go, weirdly, the louder the sort of supposedly relaxing violin sounds are, but this one's called Expressive, and at low speeds it has an almost Christopher Nolan-like drone to it, and at higher speeds there's just a kind of tense string section constantly hanging in the air that changes depending on whether you're braking or accelerating, and I feel like it's the kind of thing that is today in particular quite fun and funny when you're taking a roundabout and you need to slow down and suddenly it sounds like you're in the movie Inception. If it was nighttime and you were on a country road by yourself and you couldn't see anyone around and all you could hear was the faint hum of a string section, I feel like maybe you'd want to turn it off. Importantly for the electric variants though, it seems like the range hasn't taken too much of a hit after a fair bit of spirited driving. And this car in particular has been subject to the whims of a couple of car journalists with some fairly enthusiastic right feet. Still, when you've got a car that feels this nimble when you really shouldn't feel like that when you look at its weight on paper, it's kind of hard not to have a little bit of fun with it. We were unable to independently test the fuel or power consumption for the 5 Series variants on launch, but BMW claims the base petrol 520i sips 6.7 litres per 100 k's. For the eDrive 40, BMW says it uses 16.56 kilowatt hours for every 100 k's it covers. That's a total of 550 kilometres of claimed range. The M60 powers through just a little more, 18 kilowatt hours per 100 for a total 506 kilometre range. The electric variants come with a 22 kilowatt onboard charger, battery preconditioning, and an optional $1,199 BMW wall box for charging at home. ANCAP hasn't crash tested the new 5 Series, but the last generation was a 5 star car, and it would be unusual to see that change with any additional safety features in the new generation, even with stricter testing criteria. The 5 Series comes with BMW Driving Assistant Professional as standard, with active cruise, lane assist and departure warning, front and rear cross traffic alert, collision prevention, and intervention systems. In fact, BMW says it has about 40 safety systems, including an augmented reality dash display. BMW has a fairly industry standard 5 year unlimited kilometre warranty on its new cars, while its electric car batteries are covered by an 8 year or 160,000 kilometre warranty. For servicing, BMW offers numerous discounted packs and deals based on your car and your preferences and your desire to pay up front. For the 5 Series, a 5 year or 80,000k basic service package is $2,400, though the electric i5 variants will have different needs and lower servicing costs not yet listed by the brand. All in all, it seems like BMW Australia has done a pretty good job with the three variants it has. The low grade petrol, the lower of the two grade electrics, and if you've got the cash, that M60 is seriously impressive. Everything it does is effortless. The only thing is, for you, whether it justifies the price. When it comes to 5 Series though, I feel like some customers just have that extra little bit of wiggle room when it comes to spending, just for that extra little bit of prestige.